Here it is, the missing piece for the E36 2JC swap project is the Haltech LE 2500 ECU that we're going to be installing today on my car. percent finished with the fabrication of the 2JC swap so now it's time to control this engine that's where the LE2500 ECU comes in but we don't just put this in the car we have to install it that's where all this stuff comes in we have some halted stickers we have something really amazing here and that is the IQ7 race dash from Haltech we have all the sensors here, and the thing we're gonna be tackling today is this pro racing harness. That we have right here. So basically we have all the wires that we're gonna need for the swap. We already have like pre-terminated ECU plugs, which is handy. We have a fuse and relay box that already comes pre-wired, makes everything a lot easier. And then, we have all the plugs that we're gonna need for this engine. We have basically every plug for the engine. We have injector plugs, even a new alternator plug right here. We have, uh, I forgot what this was, it's probably TPS or something. Uh, let's see, coolant sensor. We even have a plug for the engine starter. When it comes to wiring, it can get messy very quick. I don't even know what happened. But now my table is completely filled with sensors, connectors, wire loom. We got heat shrink stuff on all sizes, stuff with the glue inside. I'm also messing with the stock harness that I had on the E36 before. Well, it's a modified M50 single vanos harness. So I'm using all the connectors so I can power up the necessary things that I need for the swab, such as this popular connector that connects uh, fuel pump wiring, a couple other things like ignition power. We also have um, the starter signal is going through this thing and a couple other things. So I'm trying to like cut this out of the old harness and adapt it with the Haltech stuff. Then moving on to the car, I'm going to try to put the computer on the firewall plate that I have to delete the AC unit. So this grommet's gonna have to go through that. Computer goes mounted there. That means the harness is pretty much gonna run almost like this. I'm gonna try to bring it out of this hole right here. It's gonna come out of this side. Then pretty much the longest pieces are gonna be like maybe down here to the crank sensor. I will definitely be making a sub harness for the ignition coils. I'm thinking about making a sub harness for the injectors, but I think I'm just gonna run that straight on the harness. Keep it simple. The Elite 2500 comes with a wiring diagram that's two-sided. So I went ahead and marked a couple of the outputs and inputs that I'm gonna be using. So I have their own designations. For example, the AVI inputs are analog voltage inputs where you can install sensors such as oil pressure, oil temperature, fuel pressure, and then I have over on this side, fuel temperature. Then AVI is also used for air temperature, coolant temperature. Also TPS is somewhere around here. I'm going to be using AVI 6 so I can make an exhaust manifold pressure probe. That way I can measure the back pressure between the manifold and the turbo. All right, on the SPI, you can install synchronized pulse inputs, such as Hall effect sensor, VR signals and the flex fuel sensor also has a signal like that. So we're going to be using vehicle speed as a SPI one. I'm going to measure the turbo RPM is going to be SPI two. Then SPI three is going to be the flex fuel sensor. We have our injector drivers. We're only going to be using six of them. I believe there are eight. And so the same thing is going on with the ignition. Then we have DPOs, which is sort of stuff like the boost control solenoid. If you want to hook up a tachometer, 
Then you have the stepper slash DPO, which is for stuff like idle air motors or the VTEC solenoids. In this case, it's going to be the VVTI solenoid. Moving on to this side of the diagram, we have the TPS, which is going to be AVI-10. We have MAP sensor. In this case, if you want to run an external MAP sensor, instead of the built-in MAP sensor that's in the ECU, if you want to run more than 30 PSI boost. The built-in relay and fuse box that comes with the Pro Harness is really handy because you have ECU power relay, you have fuel injector power relay, ignition for the coils, and fuel pumps. It also comes with two spares, so you can wire up two additional relays if you want to run maybe fans or something. There are two designated wires for the crank signal and the cam signal. So they sort of heavily shielded wires. Then since on the 2JZ, I am going to be running a stock VR setup. It's going to be wired like this. So you pretty much connect crank trigger plus and minus. So it's positive and minus a negative signal. If you do a digital Hall effect sensor, you're gonna be using 12 volt ground and then signal plus. So a signal positive, which is like a five volt reference back or 12 volt reference back. The CAN configuration is half CAN low and high. Then you have signal ground and switch power. So this is gonna be your connection for the wide band. We have two NOx sensor inputs. So I'm gonna have a front and a rear NOx sensor on this setup. Here we have the harness a little bit simplified. We have all the injector wires, which are these blue ones cut to length. So I have all the designated wires where I want them. I just have to make a power distribution little block. So I have power to each injector. The ignition coils are these wires right here, which I'm going to do a plug here. So I have a connector to disconnect the harness from the coils and leave those installed. I'm going to be using this yellow wire to make the harness. And then this other blue wires to make the powers for the injectors. Then over here have all the sensors that are gonna go in the engine. We have, for example, this is one of the knock sensors, which is gonna go right about here. Cam sensor, which goes right here. Then we have crank sensor, which is pretty much the longest wire here, goes across over down here. Then we have all the other sensors that we're gonna be using all here as well. Each wire is matched with their own corresponding ground, and if they require 5 volt signal or 12 volt signal, they're also taped as well. This, I believe, is a TPS, so you can see we have orange, which is 5 volt reference, white as the signal wire, and black for the sensor ground. In this case, it's black with a white stripe. One special sensor that we have is this one back here, which is a fuel pressure and fuel temperature in one sensor. This sensor is going to have two signal wires, one shared ground and one shared 5 volt power. I ran some wires to the left side of the engine bay, which this one's going to be. One of them is uh, for boost control. One of them is ground. Then I have turbo RPM over on this side since the outlet's right here. I might just run the wires through here or maybe around here if I can shield the wire from the heat. Then I put aside all the wires that we're not going to be using. It's all of these wires, which are extras that we have for other stuff, but we're not going to be using in my, in my application. Then last but not least, we have the power wires, which we have the power junction right here for the fuse box. There's a little power um, stud right here. So we're gonna connect the power source. We have the switch power from the ignition to turn on the computer. We have the output for the fuel pump. Then one of these wires goes to send power back to the relay box. So it's this one right here. And then these three are just gonna be connected to power. Then I save all the leftover wires so I can add grounds or power and split into other things without having to get additional wire since this is like top quality wire right here. On the E36 we have this wire right here which connects from the power distribution block over on this side of the engine bay all the way to the fuse box power on this side. And then the other cable goes to the starter. Well this is as much as we're doing for tonight. It's already midnight. I have to completely cut this plug off from here. Then I'll explain to you guys which wires we're gonna be using out of all this loom and which ones we're just discarding. I didn't film anything at all today. I literally spent about 10 work hours on the harness trying to figure everything out and get this thing done as nicely as possible. 
You can see my battle station full of Haltech sensors. I've been using all the little plugs from them and then I'll be installing the sensor themselves into the car. But first we need to get the sensor plugs installed on the harness. Here we have an example like the cam sensor. I label it cam. Then I have all these other sensors. I have flex fuel sensor. I have oil temperature or pressure. I'm sorry, vice versa. Oil pressure or temperature on this black one. Then down here we have the TPS. And all the way down here we have the crank sensor. This little handy guy right here will be for the air intake temperature sensor, which Haltex makes this really nice douche connector with, with their 18 PT sensor. Here I have another A terminal douche connector. This one is going to be for the ignition coils. I decided to do a nice little separate bracket since it's a little common thing that we always do. We have our harness for the coils. I have this ground here, which I'm gonna just put a terminal on it so I can ground it to the head. And this plugs right into the harness. Since the plugs are probably gonna go underneath the coils to tuck everything up, it's really nice to have one of these plugs so you don't have to just take everything apart in, in case you have to service it. I've been playing with a stock harness connector. This is the one that connects to the factory fuse box. I already cut it from the main harness, which is over there. And this plug is gonna have to connect to this round plug right here that connects, literally controls everything in the car. Here we have the Haltech boost controller solenoid installed this really nice billet bracket that a friend of mine sent me over Instagram. He makes this really nice manifold to install the fuel pressure and oil pressure sensors remotely from the engine. But since I am going to be monitoring the fuel temperature with this Bosch fuel temperature and fuel pressure sensor in one, I can't run it up here because otherwise he won't be able to measure the fresh flow of fuel on the regulator. Like if you have a remote line all the way over here, it won't circulate so you won't get an accurate or fuel temperature reading. Luckily I have another car that's gonna get worked on pretty soon. So this little guy can go on the RX-7. Stayed up extra late last night and finished most of the wiring. So the main harness is actually done. This is what the harness looks like above the manifold. Of course, it's gonna go under. So all this stuff is gonna be tucked away but everything has been neatly braided and insulated and heat shrunk and yeah, you name it. It's all super nicely made. Now I just gotta wire everything up. I'm finishing installing the rest of the sensors. So I still have the flex fuel sensor to mount somewhere over here. I'm like running on a room. I got power connections here. So this is a fuel pump outlet, switch power and a power feed back to the fuse box then I have the and this is a fuel pressure and fuel temperature sensor I got power to the computer here which goes to this power wire right here then this power wire is gonna get bridged to that power wire with a factory cable that I ended up redoing and making a lot nicer so I got it all in this braided stuff so now it looks a lot neater than the factory thing. Got a nice thick engine ground. I'm gonna install that later. I'm already working on the round plug. I already sourced the starter signal. Then I have to add a couple more um, things here. So we got reverse light, RPM to cluster, starter signal, which is already done. Vehicle speed is there, but I don't know if I'm gonna use that one or not. We got ignition switch, reverse like there. Then we have alternator power. This is gonna go connected straight to the cluster for that little illuminator light. That way it knows it's charging. Here we have a brand new alternator plug. Now, if you don't wanna run a stock cluster, you can always attach L straight to a 12 volt power source. As long as you have a 470 ohm resistor in between the 12 volt source, and the alternator. I'm working on my hose management underneath the car. So I got the power steering lines clamped down to the oil pan. I have this nice little piece right here to keep the hose from accidentally rubbing to the chassis here. So it's nice and tight. I'm still working when I'm gonna mount my fuel pressure sensor. So 
I'll leave this for now. I think I made the harness to reach about here. So I have to see if I'm gonna be able to mount it further away or not. I'm starting to make a play to mount the flex fuel sensor. That way I can bolt it onto the car since this has three bolts, it's really hard to find a really flat surface on the BMW. I'm trying to mount it around here, so I'm gonna make that plate, then bolt the plate to the car and then the sensor to the plate. While the mess intensifies, I did one really cool thing underneath the car, and that's mounting my flex fuel sensor. I did this nice aluminum plate. Since the chassis is not really straight, there's one step here, then there's another step, and another step. This sensor needs to be mounted pretty flat. So I made this true flat surface for it, so I can mount to. Then I use this stud here, and the rib nut here, and then another rib nut up here. And then I have that six line coming this way, shielded with this nice stock plate that goes here, really cool. And then I have another straight fitting going up, and then now we're just gonna route it to the regulator. If you're wondering what this is, this is a drain fitting or drain hose from my old catch can, which goes all the way over there with a the peacock valve. That way I can drain out of the car without making a mess all over the chassis. I transform my firewall plate into a ECU mounting plate, so I can mount the ECU is gonna go right here, fuse box goes here, vacuum line goes through here, harness goes through this hole, which is a two inch hole, and then over here I'm gonna install the wide band module. I think I have everything pretty much ready to run through, so let's just run this harness through the hole and see what it looks like. Here we have our final piece with the Halted Elite 2500 installed. I got the computer mounted on rubber bushings, so it's, it's isolated from vibration and heat. So it's a fuse box. Since it's only two mounts, you can see it wiggles a little bit. Then we have our grommet here. We have all the wires that are going inside, along with the RPM gauge wires. We have the CAN bus here for the Haltech dash. Then we have the Y-band connection over here. Then the rest is the other side for the engine bay. Got a lot done today, so I guess tomorrow should be the final installation and hopefully the startup of the 2JC. I don't even know how many days I've been working on this thing straight to try to get it done. But I'm super excited and it's going to sound amazing. Let's hope for a good start on the next video.